Hello students, so we are back again from Minerva Adventures mock test for you. I am Rahul once again to discuss with you the second modular class on NEET curriculum 2021 best course of us of target 2021 and we are going for our desired topic to discuss that is dimensional analysis and when we are going to do this dimensional analysis uh, I hope that you have already revised through the dimensional basics of the different types of questions on units measurement and dimension that we did in the previous class also now we are in the dimensional analysis and we are going to solve it in total exam oriented manner that what kind of questions we can actually expect from this particular thing we know very well that dimensional analysis is actually based on the finding out the relations between some different different quantities as we know so we have to focus it on properly such that there should not be any untouched portion any stones should not be unturned on this entire discussion on dimensional analysis first of all in physics there are plenty of equations or mathematical relations that actually holds good between uh, different different physical quantities and whenever we deal about these physical quantities we must maintain one, um, one particular thing on this aspect that is whenever we think about whenever we think about this particular concept we had we have to be that much concerned that dimensional analysis is relating those quantities in terms of quality only not in terms of quantity we know that dimension only work with quality not on quantity or amount so when it is not amounting anything when it is not defining any amount we should be that much careful with our working so remember there are so many relations in physics which are having linear and some product and quotient relation so one thing we should notice from this particular idea that dimensional analysis is only applicable for those relations which are either in the quotient or the product relation they are maintaining so like if it is having a relation between y equals to x plus minus z so there will not be any dimensional analysis working but if the relation is having a relation y equals to x cubed by z square this will be the correct approach to apply dimensional analysis for this particular relations so this can be easily used to prove some mathematical physical relations in various options and the second thing is dimensional analysis is required to convert the unit system convert one fundamental unit system to another like we did in the previous class that force is mentioned in some uh, different unit system as fundamental unit acceleration is mentioned as fundamental unit velocity is mentioned as fundamental unit then we need to find out pressure density velocity uh, velocity is given so momentum impulse all these things so first of all we need to discuss one very very important concept that is how you can do this dimensional analysis applicable for different parts of physics now see when we are applying dimensional analysis we should remember that this kind of relationship we can only apply for one physical quantity which is which is depending upon other two quantities or other three quantities that we should remember but the thing is that more than three quantities dependence is not allowed under dimensional analysis which is very very important that the dependence on the third order that is we should say that more than the third order there's a fourth variable dependence that we can't allow for dimensional analysis that's a big limitation of this process now suppose we have one particular concept like one quantity suppose x is depending upon two quantities y and z it is applicable x is depending upon three quantities w y z it is also applicable but suppose x is uh, depending upon v w y z this is not going to be applicable so these two cases we can apply for different dimensional analysis so suppose let us start for a very simple example to start with like force depends upon 
mass and acceleration when force is depending upon mass and acceleration and how we can utilize it that how they are related we can write it like we know that f equals to k m to the power x a to the power y where k is a proportionality constant which is unitless or dimensionless now from here one thing we should concentrate that whenever we are concentrating on force that is mass into acceleration we know that very famous formula but we are not going to use that mass into acceleration directly here we are going to derive that relation on the basis of dimensional analysis and how we can do this we can form an identity between the dimension or the identical dimension on the both side of left hand side and right hand side so on the left hand side it is ml t to the power minus 2 here k should be omitted from the dimension m is here x a means acceleration l t to the power minus 2 whole to the power y so it is finally it is becoming like m to the power x l to the power y and t to the power minus 2y it is like this now if we compare all these things together it is x 1 and y also becomes 1 so the comparison ends here and our also we have finished our job on this particular problem that f ultimately becomes what that f equals to k m to the power 1 a to the power 1 so k you can write or not it is not important it's a dimensionless quantity so you can write f equals to k m a and you know very well when we mathematically derived f equals to m a from our class 9 onwards even in class 11 we did so that time also whatever the process you are following simple algebra or calculus whatever you are following there f equals to k m a what is an inevitable stop of that particular problem and you know that from where that k was taken as a constant of magnitude 1 which is called for unit force where force was creating that unit mass for unit acceleration so that time k becomes 1 so you even you can consider that k for ordinary derivation of f equals to ma also that k becomes 1 so if k becomes 1 mathematically eventually then finally this equation holds good for dimensional analysis so f equals to k m a so obviously it is a standard equation on the basis of dimension and even you can also write a proportional to m a that is not going to be any harm for any student so this is what we call dimensional analysis and it is showing the relation of one variable with other two variables same thing we can do for three variable situation also like we can do one very simple thing like energy suppose energy is related to mass energy e is related to mass acceleration due to gravity and the height height of the object mass acceleration due to gravity and height of the object now if it is related like this then e equals to k m to the power x g to the power y h to the power z something like this now from here what we can actually do that if we relate this on the terms of dimension that energy means ml square t to the power minus 2 that is equals to k is dimensionless m to the power x l t to the power minus 2 whole to the power y and h that is l whole to the power z so finally it will become m to the power x l to the power y plus z and t to the power minus 2y so here m if we compare on both sides so x becomes 1 so naturally if i compare this y it is independent over there so minus 2y becomes minus 2 so y also becomes 1 now if i compare the power of l on both side then y plus z becomes 2 so z becomes 2 minus 1 so it is 1 also so finally if i write this equation in proper manner it will be k m g h because all the powers are coming as one so if you can keep it you know that potential energy term becomes mgh so there also uh, the constant becomes one we know very well so when the constant becomes one we have this e equals to mgh as potential energy 
expression we know about MGH. So either you can write it or even you can remove the constant, you can write it like E proportional to MGH. So it is all about dimensional variety that you can use it in terms of equation or you can use it in a proportionality relation that completely up to you that what kind of method you are going to apply. But this is the end of the day, it's a simple way or simple approach of dimension that what we can apply for this particular thing. This is ultimately we are looking for. Now the important concept from here, what we are actually focusing that is going to be playing a very important role. There is different different problems could be set forward for this kind of situations. It not only force, not only mass, energy, that can be anything. So as for an example, if we go for one particular problem, which can be relating to uh, two variables, three variables, whatever, that ultimately depends upon the situation. So I hope it is clear to you, you have already done it in class 11 and several times in class 12 also. But now it is again, we are doing it for competitive exam preparation. And we should be little bit faster than what we have done in class 11, 12 level. So uh, let's take a very simple example that speed of sound in air depends upon the elastic modulus of the air. There is a bulk modulus of air and obviously the density of the air medium, density of air. So we need to find out a relation between these according to dimensional analysis. So what we can actually do, we can form the equation V equals to K e to the power X into rho to the power Y and we know very well that what is the actual dimension of this E, E is called elastic modulus and we know very well that elastic modulus dimension is what? Elastic modulus is nothing but actually the dimension of pressure or the dimension of stress. We know the dimension of pressure is the force per unit area so it is ml to the power minus 1 and t to the power minus 2 where the velocity is not carrying the dimension of mass in there it is lt to the power minus 1 so no mass involved in the dimension of velocity and the density becomes mass by volume it is ml to the power minus 3 so if i write it like lt to the power minus 1 there is no mass involvement here the elastic modulus e so it's the dimension of pressure and this is what we have the density that is ml to the power minus 3 whole to the power y. Now from here that when we want to compare all this thing it is m to the power x plus y l to the power minus x minus 3y and t to the power minus 2x. So this will be the thing. So whenever we are looking into it the comparison and all this m we can take it as m to the power 0. So if I compare, if I start comparing on both sides, so you can see that t is t can be compared from the, on the both side at the beginning because it is not associated with any other variables like x and y. So it is only independent variable x over there. So minus 2x can be written as minus 1 if I compare on both sides. So minus minus goes. So x becomes half. So this is the first thing we got from here again if i compare this x plus y with this power of m so x plus y becomes zero so y becomes minus x so y becomes minus half so this is ultimately the relation between the x and y with this v so finally what we got here k e to the power half rho to the power minus of we know that to the power half means root over and to the power minus half means 1 by root over so finally it is k root over e by rho so this is going to be a very very important relation that is v equals to k root over e by rho so this is a very important relation we have proved and i know that from your sound knowledge of the chapter that is sound wave propagation so there also you have studied the velocity of sound through any medium is equal to the square root of the elastic modulus of that medium. If it is solid, it is Young's modulus. If it is liquid or gas, it is bulk modulus. We know very well about that Newton Laplace connection and all this. So here V and K stands for a constant. It can be one anytime eventually. So either you can write this or you can write this V proportional to root over e by rho. 
so these are the common terms and common notations what we actually follow that in case of this particular thing that is called dimensional analysis now when we do the dimensional analysis for this particular approach we need to focus on one particular concept that is what that is very very important for us that this type of relations is only holding the two relations that is one variable is one or two relations this one particular variable is related to other two variables but one particular variable can be related to other three variables also and that is not a big issue so suppose we are giving to another situation where we have a simple pendulum and the simple pendulum is having its own time period which is dependent upon the length of the pendulum and acceleration due to gravity and we have to find out a relation between them by dimension so t is again k l to the power x g to the power y again you can see here it is t so there is no sign of comparison between l and t right so l to the power x into l t to the power minus 2 whole to the power y so finally it is l to the power x plus y and t to the power minus 2y so it is l to the power 0 t to the power 1 so whenever we are doing this in proper manner here it is minus 2y equals to 1 so minus 2y equals to 1 means ultimately y becomes minus half so it is x plus y is 0 so x equals to minus half so this is a very common so here x equals to minus y so minus half minus half so finally it will become plus half so here we are again getting two relations that is involved with t so how they are actually related from this particular equation so t becomes k l to the power half g to the power minus half so that is k root over l by g you know very well that t was having a relation 2 pi root over l by g here k means 2 pi which is a dimensionless constant so you can keep it like this k root over l by g or even you can write it t proportional to root over l by g so these are the very common relations we have in terms of the dimensional analysis which is going to be proving the relations between uh, one variable with other two variables like we can prove a very important relation whenever we are going to discuss it suppose a particle of mass m is moving around a circular path of radius r and when it is moving around a center or any particle with a velocity v along a path of radius r so the force working on it if it is m it depends upon its mass its velocity and radius of the path so how this force is related to all these that is a big matter of query and if i write the equation in properly so f equals to k m to the power x v to the power y r to the power z so if it is like this so we can write it like f stands for m l t to the power minus 2 so f uh, m's power is not there so it should be taken as 1 so m to the power 1 l to the power 1 t to the power minus 2 equals to m to the power x and v is l t to the power minus 1 whole to the power y and r which is l to the power z so if i take a common identity on both sides so m to the power x l to the power y plus z and t to the power minus y so if we do it like this so finally what happens over here that is if i compare on both sides so x equals to 1 if i compare on both sides that minus y stands for minus 2 so minus minus goes so y becomes 2 and if i take on this y plus z so this y plus z becomes 1 so z becomes 1 minus 2 where y is taken as 2 only so it z becomes minus 1 so what about my equation from where i started counting so that was f equals to k this one this was my starting equation and how it will look like in the present scenario that f equals to k m to the power 1 v to the power 2 and r to the power minus 1 so if i simplify again 
so f becomes k m v square by r if i if you want to retain this constant it is okay or if you, you can write it in proportionality term that a proportional to mv square by r so ultimately you know that you have started when you were in class 11 12 level you have studied about centripetal force of rotational motion so when you have done the centripetal force and all these things you know that very well that f equals to mv square by r and all that parameters are over there so you know about centripetal force and k that mv square by r that constant becomes one so ultimately this equation mathematically holds good and whenever you have this particular equation to apply you can remember the constant is taken as one only so k actually satisfies the equation as a constant with a unit value so that ultimately not hampering our situation of dimension analysis now from here if we again look into another matter where again we can go through a uh, two variable situation that how we can do it a two variable situation like energy like any reaction that some mass is going to be converted into energy so that energy is somehow related to mass and speed of light which is c and we know the famous one that e equals to mc square and we are not going to uh, use this anymore because we need to prove it somehow so here if i take the equation e equal to k m to the power x and c to the power y and how we can prove it that is a very very important issue that energy relation is ml square t to the power minus 2 so m to the power 1 i am taking to compare on both side so here m to the power x and lt to the power minus 1 whole to the power y so finally it is m to the power x l to the power y and t to the power minus y so finally when it will be like m to the power x l to the power y t to the power minus y and i am comparing the identity on both side so naturally x becomes 1 y becomes 2 so my job is done for this particular question because this expression becomes k m to the power 1 c square so you can want if you want to retain this k it is fine so you can write it as k m c square or even you can write it e proportional to m c square so if the k becomes 1 according to Einstein's mass energy equivalence relation so this k becomes 1 means this equation holds good so ultimately you can write it as e equals to mc square so ultimately by dimension k has dimension less constant so dimensionally on the both side the equation holds good so this is actually a very very important concept that is known as dimensional analysis and we have proved the very very famous equations uh, which are so true in the physics field around the globe around the different different chapters of physics and still it is uh, derivable under the approach of dimensional analysis that we are doing through the entire class and we have plenty of problems uh, left to finish off this particular topic for our NWT preparation now from here when we are going to start the next numerical on this particular problem so uh, where are we actually you can see that again we are uh, going towards that particular discussion so actually if we want to go for the same kind of derivation here like force is somehow related to uh, coefficient of viscosity eta suppose a ball is getting dropped through a viscous medium under gravity and obviously it is facing some viscous force that is f and it depends upon the radius of the ball the eta the coefficient of viscosity of the medium and obviously the velocity of the ball so if i actually if i actually go through the mathematical correlation that k eta to the power x r to the power y and v to the power z so finally how we can make the equation as follows that ml t to the power minus 2 equals to what is the dimension of eta if i ask you if i had the provision to directly ask you i could have asked you that what is the dimension of eta it is called obviously it is called what coefficient of viscosity and its dimension is ml to the power minus 1 and t to the power minus 1 whole to the power x radius stands for the dimension of length so it is to the power y and velocity lt to the power minus 1 whole to the power z so finally if i make the arrangement properly so m to the power 1 l to the power 1 t to the power minus 2 
it is n to the power x l to the power l is everywhere so it is minus x plus y plus z and t to the power if i take this common properly it is minus common x plus z so finally if i compare now on both sides so x to the power x becomes 1 so this is our elementary equation and now from the uh, third one this t minus of x plus z equals to minus 2 so minus minus goes so here x plus z equals to 2 and z becomes 2 minus x that is 1 again because 2 minus 1 so z becomes 1 similarly if you go through the comparison of l so here if i go for the comparison of l that is minus x plus y plus z and here it will be 1 so obviously x and z values are same so y becomes 1 again so here also we are actually deriving the relation between x y and z so f becomes from here that is k eta r v and if you can remember the stokes law of viscosity that was on a spherical object the viscous force through a medium in a viscous medium the viscous drag it was 6 pi eta r v so 6 pi is the constant taken for k so we know very well this is a very very important contribution for the field of uh, stokes law and the application of force we know very well so f equals to 6 pi eta r v so here it is a very important thing for all of us now f equals to we got x equals to 1 y equals to 1 and z equals to 1 so this is very very important for us now from this kind of relation again it can be shown between some other things where one dimension can even vanish from that particular situation concept that one particular uh, parameter can be vanished from this one so how it can be done see one thing we can do from here that when we are organizing the whole setup we should remember one concept that is suppose within water one uh, wave is propagating water medium sound wave is propagating and the velocity of sound wave is depending upon three things the wavelength that is lambda of the sound wave next the density of the water medium and obviously the acceleration due to gravity g of that particular place so if i compare so they can ask you a question like that which option will be correct number one option a can be v proportional to lambda g option b can be v equals to lambda g option c can be v square proportional to lambda g and option d can be very important that is v square proportional to lambda square g square so ultimately these two are the same so you can think that these two are not there as a correct answer so this and this they have some equal probable chance to get in but see if v proportional to lambda g could have been found out from dimensional analysis and if it was good or uh, this one is good from dimension this has to be good again because v proportional to lambda g or v equals to lambda g both dimensionally correct so this is also not be taken so you can take this one as the correct answer this is a time saving process for all of you but if i do the actual manner again uh, if i do the actual manner from here also here again i am writing v square proportional to lambda square g square here this lambda square g square you can cancel out because these two are having the same concept if you square it on both side and this one we are also not taking because v equals to lambda g so that means v square equals to lambda square g square by dimension without dimension that ultimately holds true so these two cannot be good so ultimately this is the right answer that we can have and it's a time saving process for us and how we can do it properly because not every time in exam we couldn't have been that much sure with this kind of option or not so what we can do actually from this the same way that v equal to k lambda to the power x rho to the power y g to the power z so this was the trick and when we use it it is m to the power 0 l to the power 1 t to the power minus 1 lambda means wavelength to the power x length dimension simply rho means density so ml to the power minus 3 whole to the power y and lt to the power minus 2 whole to the power z 
So finally it is coming as m to the power y l to the power x minus 3y plus z and t to the power minus 2z. So this is the situation. If you compare so this minus 2z is minus 1. So minus 2z equals to minus 1 so z becomes half. So this is the situation. Then again if I compare the power of y so it is y becomes 0 and obviously this x minus 3y plus z how much it will be surely so x minus 3y plus z becomes 1 and you got y as 0 so finally you are getting simply like x equals to uh, 1 minus z and z is half so it is 1 minus half so simply it is becoming half so x is also half so if you put it all this in equation for v so v becomes k lambda to the power half and g to the power half so ultimately if you take the square on so it is v square proportional to lambda g because k square is also going to be a constant and you can remove that constant from the equation to maintain the proportionality in between this v lambda and g so whenever we are maintaining this particular approach of this kind of question so you can see one quantity was very much present in the question and it was told that velocity of some one particular that dependent variable is depending upon the density finally it is coming of no use so this kind of things we can easily see in this type of problems so that is not going to be a big matter of worry like one type of question you can expect suppose they have told that one body is uh, thrown vertically down uh, from rest that is you know it it's called free fall it is the body is having free fall and suppose it is covered a height uh, throughout this free fall and within a time t under gravity so suppose it is given so what are the values of x and y they have asked you so it's simply you can go for dimensional analysis and you know it better that h means l uh, to the l to the power 0 so uh, l to the power 1 and g means lt to the power minus 2 whole to the power x and time t to the power y so you can easily form the equation here t is not there so t to the power 0 l to the power x t to the power minus 2x plus y so this will be the ultimate thing now the if you compare over there so that is x equals to 1 again if you compare minus 2x plus y equal to 0 so y equal to 2x so it becomes 2 so finally h becomes what that is h equals to k g t square and you know very well for proving this kind of things and solving this kind of questions we don't need to go for the detailed dimensional analysis because we know from our class 11 even 9 10's knowledge that whenever a body is having free fall its basic equation it starts with initial velocity zero so whenever it falls down it has this kind of equation h equals to ut plus half gt square but whenever this free fall takes place this u becomes 0 so h becomes half gt square so if you can remember the equation of free fall half gt square so simply this k becomes half the constant so gt square means x means 1 y means 2 so if you can relate correlate all these things once again what you have studied in the different chapters of physics then the work of dimension the workload and pressure of dimension will be less for you and obviously whenever we will be thinking about the application of dimensions the thinking process will be little bit easier as from students point of view now when we are thinking about one particular idea thinking about one particular idea of dimensional analysis suppose one type of question i can expect that uh, time period time period of an orbiting satellite around earth it depends upon three things that is gravitational constant radius of the orbit and obviously the mass of the planet this is the time period of the orbiting satellite this is the gravitational constant capital g this is the radius of the circular path or the orbit and this is 
the mass of the planet about which the orbit is having the rotation. Now from here, when we are going to uh, have this rotation completely, then what we can actually look for that is very very important for us that whenever we have this time period and all this now see carefully that time period this time period is depends upon grm so k g to the power x r to the power y m to the power z we know that time period is only t so uh, surely we need to use m and l so m to the power 0, l to the power 0, t to the power 1. What is the dimension of g if I ask you? I think you will be surely answering. It is m to the power minus 1, l cube and t to the power minus 2. So it is m to the power minus 1, l cube, t to the power minus 2, whole to the power x, the radius that is l to the power y and the mass which is m to the power z. So now from here, if I concentrate on this particular thing, that is, it is m to the power minus x, obviously, m to the power minus x plus z, l to the power 3x plus y, and t to the power minus 2x. So from this kind of relation, there can be four options, that which options is correct, which of the options is correct, that t proportional to r, option b t square varies us r option c t, t proportional to r to the power 3 by 2 and option d t cube proportional to r square so these are the four options they can ask you so ultimately we need to form the relation of the whole thing but as for the question I need to search a relation between T and R. So here we want to have basically, basically the Y I need to find. That is highly important. Now see if I want to have that, I can compare, start comparing with minus 2X. So minus 2X equals to 1. So X becomes minus half. This is with me. Now if I compare this M, so minus X plus Z equal to 0. So z equal to x, so it is also half, no issues. And if I compare this L also, this is 3x plus y equals to 0. So ultimately y becomes minus 3x. So it is actually minus 3 by 2. It is something like this, but x is minus half. So it will become plus 3 by 2. So naturally you got your answer. Here you can see the R's power is 3 by 2. So this will be your answer. But if, if you don't like to use dimension analysis and if you want to save your time, then you could have not done all this process and you have just remember the Kepler's third law and Kepler's third law told that planets or satellites when they rotate about on one star on the planet, you know this famous law that T square varies as R cube, so T varies as r to the power 3 by 2 it's quite normal so if we can correlate whatever we have studied in the previous chapters in previous our classes before then we can little bit save our time and that is going to be playing a very vital role for in terms of our exam now the important thing is one type of question i can set for you that uh, they can give for a particular situation I told that one variable if it is dependent upon four other variables it will be very hard to discuss that particular situation under dimensional analysis but suppose it is given like uh, there is a tube through which a fluid is flowing and if through the fluid if the pressure difference across the ends is P the length of the tube is L and the volume it is passing through the fluid is V so in per unit time the rate of flow of the liquid is vr so that vr is actually v by t so if the radius of the cross section if it is r and the viscosity of the fluid flowing inside the tube is eta then we have to find out a relation between these four things basically that this vr 
डिपेंड्स अपॉन पी एल ईटा आर दिस इज द सिचुएशन दिस इज द सिचुएशन फॉर द एंटायर थिंग सो हाउ वी कैन अप्लाई दिस पर्टिकुलर डायमेंशनल एनालिसिस वेन वन डिपेंडेंट वेरिएबल इज डिपेंडिंग अपॉन फोर अदर वेरिएबल्स सो हाउ वी कैन डील विद दिस सिचुएशन so one thing we can do for this type of only this type of problem where the pressure is a scalar quantity and which is changing throughout the one into another because when the fluid is direct, uh, having this flow of direction so that means this side pressure is surely greater than this side so throughout the end of the throughout the ends through across the ends through the entire path of the fluid through the tube the pressure is changing and it's a scalar quantity which is changing so p by l it's taken as a new quantity which is taken as pressure gradient so pressure gradient if it is taken as a single quantity we can write it like vr depends upon pressure gradient r and eta they are depending like this so now it is the uh, we have transformed the equation in such a way that the rate of flow of the fluid is depending upon three things that is pressure gradient radius and the eta so ultimately this vr equals to k p by l whole to the power x r to the power y and eta to the power z now what about this pressure gradient dimension ml to the power minus 1 t to the power minus 2 this is the dimension of pressure we know by l so finally it becomes ml to the power minus 2 t to the power minus 2 so this is the dimension of pressure gradient so if i put it here this v by t this is actually a dimension of uh, volume so it is l cube l cube t to the power minus 1 so this is not having m on one side so you surely write m to the power 0 l cube t to the power minus 1 equals to m l to the power minus 2 t to the power minus 2 whole to the power x r that is a length whole to the power y and eta m l to the power minus 1 t to the power minus 1 whole to the power z so if i take the identity practically and if i take the identity properly in this field so m if i write the powers as x plus z l if i write how much it will be it is minus 2x plus y minus z surely minus 2x plus y and minus z that's nice now t from here it is minus 2x minus z so if i start comparing on both side you will get a surely for the x comparison it is x plus z equals to 0 the comparison of m and for t it is becoming like minus of this you can take it like equation 1 and or even you can write it like that x is uh, x plus z equals to 0 so in place of x you can put x equals to minus z so if you compare from t that is minus 2x minus z equals to minus 1 So if minus common to x plus z equals to minus one minus minus goes so to x plus z equals to one so if I put the x equals to minus z over here so it is minus two z plus z equals to one so minus z equals to one so z becomes minus one so this is another important relation we got as z becomes minus one so x will be surely minus of minus one so x becomes one. so this is one relation we hold here that is very very important for us now if i compare this l if i compare this l with this 3 so it is minus 2x plus y minus z equals to 3 now you know very well minus 2x x is 1 so it is ultimately minus 2 very fine it is ultimately minus 2 uh, plus y and it is becoming 1 so it is here surely we can write that y minus 1 equal to 3 so y becomes 4 so what is my equation standing over here my equation i started with vr equals to k p by l whole to the power x r to the power z so it is clearly showing like k p 
by L whole to the power x, x becomes 1, r to the power 4 and eta to the power minus 1. So ultimately, finally this equation will look like what? It will look like vr equals to k p r to the power 4 by eta L. So this will be the scenario. So if I write it finally, it becomes vr equals to k into p r to the power 4 by eta L. So this is actually the very famous Poiseuille's equation in viscosity we know. The Poiseuille's equation in viscosity. So when we think about the Poiseuille's equation in viscosity we remember. We remember a very very important thing that a tube is there and fluid is passing through it and we can find the rate of flow of the fluid through that tube. So when we did it we gone through the conventional mathematical process and during that conventional mathematical process we got this formula where it had a formation like vr equals to pi p r to the power 4 by 8 eta l. You can compare this with this equation and you will see the constant is pi by 8. So finally you will have this particular idea of having more than three variables dependence on one. So that time you can at least go for this kind of approach where you can use two variables to convert into one variable. So four variables will be thinking out, figuring out with uh, three variables at a time and you can use the dimensional analysis formula. Now in the last class we did one very important discussion that there will be a different unit system and uh, you, can, you will be asked to find out some very familiar quantities of us. Like suppose uh, in that system force is given as a natural fundamental quantity, area is given as a fundamental quantity and velocity is given as a fundamental quantity. These are fundamental quantity as given. Now they have asked you suppose two things. They have asked you the dimension of power and they have asked you the dimension of suppose momentum. So these are the two questions suppose we are asking you. So you can do it uh, by the process what we did uh, last time in the previous class. So that time we did what? That we got area, fine. Area means naturally what? L square. So in new system the length will be that area to the power half. So this will be my length. So if this is length, so I can get my mass over here. So how can I get my mass over here or time over here? So here I have the well, uh, force or velocity or mass. I can get the mass, I can get mass into velocity into momentum, we can do this. But the same thing I can do here that uh, we can find out the time here and if I get the time, so there from there we can get the momentum, we can get the mass, everything. So, but if you know dimension analysis, you can directly write that momentum depends upon force, area and velocity. So momentum, if you write it momentum for what? Momentum we know that m into velocity. So m l t to the power minus 1 equals to force means mlt to the power minus 2 area means l square and v here v stands for velocity lt to the power minus 1. So finally this is x this is y and this is z. So if you compare like the same way here m to the power x l to the power x plus 2y plus z and obviously t to the power minus 2x minus z. So if you start comparing on both sides, if you start comparing, so you will get x equals to 1. You will surely get minus 2x minus z. So minus 2x plus z equals to minus 1. So it is going on minus. So x is 1. So z becomes 1 minus 2. So it is minus 1. And finally, if you compare this one, so x plus 2y plus z. So this x plus 2y plus z becomes 1. So actually this x plus 2y plus z means what? Here x means 1, 
z we got as minus 1 so they are going so y becomes actually uh, 2i is 1 so y becomes half so finally what is the relation we have that momentum we got as k we don't need to use so f this stands for 1 a it stands for half and v it stands for minus 1 so finally my answer becomes then what is the dimension of momentum? That is force into area to the power half into velocity to the power minus 1. So by this way, whatever the process we used in the previous class, apart from that, by this way also using dimension analysis, if any formatted measurement system is given, still you can go for uh, this particular approach so hopefully we have done the dimensional analysis well and we are surely moving on to the next class that is error analysis in the continuation so hopefully it is clear to you and we are signing out we are getting uh, coming back to the newer class with error analysis very soon and hopefully we'll be staying there so thank you everybody for staying tuned with us